second, you have a, a car, a truck come here. the front of the machine is a bit more 
I think more to this side actually yeah it sticks out more on this side so now I have to drive a bit more to the towards the shoulder but no big deal and yeah so there's a curfew there's a curfew in Montreal for this kind of when you're so long over 30 meters 99 feet 10 inches from bumper to bumper and that's why I need an escort and you cannot go through Montreal until 930 and you see this guy was late like I thought I was late we agreed on 830 over here and exit 814 and the last uh, mile marker in kilometers at the Quebec line is 849 I think so it's basically no oh, wait a second so it's only basically 30 35 kilometers 20 miles oh okay oh I got my journal in there I gotta write down my uh, odometer when I'm entering Quebec for my IFTA Oh, check this picture we're running right under the gotta go left All clear. we went around right under the excavator and so because of this um, curfew I thought first they 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 said the crane appointment is for eight o'clock and then I only got my permit at like around four yesterday and I'm pretty sure there was a curfew in the evening as well you know so anyway so this escort guy calls me and we arrange a meeting and then he gives me his phone number he's he gives me uh, three middle numbers wrong and I go and I told him, I said, I cannot go inside the truck stop, it's too small. I'll wait for you on the shoulder, right? Have an 18 coming. 10 4. And I'm waiting, waiting, and I was there quarter to nine, so I'm already 15 minutes late, right? And he's up there. I try to call his um, cell, it says, uh, the number you're calling is not available. Try your call later. What the heck? I call like 10 times the same message, you know? And and then I, we agreed on channel 10 for CB. I call him on channel 10 because I'm thinking maybe he's sitting inside the truck stop, you know? Cannot raise him. So finally I called, uh, I sent a message to the uh, permit company. I said, where is this guy? Do you have a, do you have a way of contacting him like via email? And so they said, yeah, he's right there. He's uh, buying fuel. He's buying gas for his truck. And so they told me, they give me the right number. And I finally was able to, uh, to connect with him. And so now he's behind me because on the freeway, he has to be behind me when, you, when we go on a two lane road. He has to be uh, in the front and so this is the end of uh, Ontario so we're gonna be entering uh, Quebec probably in five minutes and that's like the dock territory because now they have all these weight restrictions I got my permit which exact with the exact routing which roads I can go like I, I must follow that route Okay, if I don't, I can get a big ticket. Big ticket, big fine. But it's okay. So this was not a very good paying load because I was afraid to ask for a lot of money. I didn't see any loads out of Pennsylvania. If you remember, I went to Pittsburgh, PA, right? And I couldn't find anything. And so this guy offered me this load, but there's still profit. I still made some money except that I today is exactly two weeks since I got the rate confirmation and uh, Wednesday two weeks ago that's when I started driving towards the consignee okay I wrote down my mileage and you see that flag 
the blue white flag on the right and there's a sign says welcome Quebec this is it and that's the rest that's the truck stop I talked to you last night I know uh, one night yeah I know but I was afraid what if there's a cop in there right there's already it's uh, Quebec so technically if I come in and I don't have an escort and the guy sitting there I, I was afraid he'd give me a ticket Yeah, because I'm 30 meters long, I cannot drive without you in Quebec. We have a lot of drivers just pass and come here. Uh, the cell is a little bit farther, but I see nobody. I know, I understand the, the law is the law, but a lot of drivers just come here. And Going left. Off here. Yeah, there's a truck on the shoulder. Yeah, okay, so next time uh, I'll meet the escort over there. Yeah, you see, he says that it's okay. He says that's what they all do like that. So yeah, next time I'll better meet him there. Hey, Carl, please let me know if the forklift falls off. Let me know, okay? I'll stop and pick it up. Yeah, okay, you have another 18 coming. 10-4. <laughs> I don't think he understood what I said. And that's my route, the blue line. Uh, Google Maps uh, found my destination and it's uh, routing me exactly like that. So we're going through, no, actually no, that's the wrong way. He's sending me through R30, I have to go through that little Vaudreuil or whatever it's called. No, Valley, Valley Field. Uh, we'll take a... Sorry, what do you need? No, I was joking. I said if the forklift falls off, you let me know. It was a joke, joke. Ah, okay, I know. Sorry, I'm French. I, I tried to understand what you tried to say. And, uh, I'm, uh, what? <laughs> Sorry. No, this thing that I have on my trailer, it's a big uh, forklift, you know, the one they use at the port to pick up big containers. Really? Yeah, it just it doesn't have wheels on, but that's uh, one they, you know, put the tires and wheels on. It's one of these very big forklifts that you see at the port. It can pick up a 40-foot container up to 90,000 pounds, 45 tons. I got Wow.
ça va. I have no idea what that means. I know bonjour is uh, hi, right? Uh, but I cannot film outside. It's one of those places where they have uh, placards everywhere, you know, like a little cute picture of a smartphone or a camera with a big, thick line across it. But basically, it's a big uh, transportation company. So it's also a transportation company, but I see like a railroad in here. They load, sorry, they load metal. They have cranes, you know. It's a it's a big company. So it's like a freight forwarder, you know. And so they bought this forklift for for their own uh, use. And I already see basically. Um, Behind me, I see the counterweight for this machine. I see that little attachment for the for the container. You know, it's like very cool. You know, I like learning this stuff because I would have never known that such machines exist. Okay, I saw them at, at the port, but again, only because I'm a and my little GoPro died over there because I don't know. I charged. I thought I charged it. Okay, do we have the problem with the sound? Uh, I'm sorry again guys uh, about that mishap last time I was using this LG phone okay where's my camera I know it's in the bottom left see so because I got my glasses on otherwise I have to look like this if I look at myself to you it seems like I'm looking to the right but because the camera is actually the bottom left that's why this Casey Neistat is always wearing glasses because he's actually looking this way uh, but anyway, what I wanted to say is that yeah, this is a very big company and uh, they bought this machine for their own use and the other parts are already here and I got here okay, except we missed one exit. Um, now we had just to turn around and like from where we're supposed to go on Highway 201 from uh, 20. Uh, but other than that, it was cool and then coming here we came it was very narrow like entrance so I had to learn on the spot how to back with the Jeep and I did practice a little bit at a truck stop right so now uh, but it's like you have to have like two heads you know one head thinking about the Jeep which way the Jeep is going and then the other head has to think about where the trailer is going so to send the trailer to the left like when you look in the mirror if you want the trailer to go this way you need the Jeep to go this way and for that for the Jeep to go this way I have to turn the steering wheel left like I'm telling you it was really uh, educational but I managed to do it I managed to back and uh, without you know breaking the Jeep too bad it like I was basically you keep your you know uh, steering wheel movements to a minimum and you watch the Jeep very closely which way it's going so if it starts going this one way, you start turning the wheel to the other way. It's kind of like the Jeep is like the tra like the trailer. It behaves exactly like the trailer. Like if you want the Jeep to go left, you have to steer right. But the the final trailer basically behaves as a car. You know, like when you back your car, right? If you want to go left, you turn left, right? So eventually, that's how it's. Uh, when you have a jeep and uh, but i mean it was interesting this is my first time and i didn't screw up you know i didn't get into a situation where i couldn't get get out of and then basically yeah i i went back on that street and then because i had to make a, a right turn inside the yard and so i went back and i tried to position my rig all the way to the left you know like s s gluing myself to the left shoulder like to give me a wide um, you know turning radius and these guys were helping because they have their own little uh, escort car and like my, I said adieu bye bye to my old escort and this guy was just blocking the road because there's some traffic there and he helped me and then I came in and I parked the truck and I said let's look can you guys show me where I'm supposed to go because I want to see first because it's such a long you know vehicle and they told me okay this is where the crane will be this is where you can drop your Jeep and so yeah so basically I had to um, uh, start the Honda on the trailer uh, 
uh, drop the air in the suspension on the Jeep there's a little switch inside the fender just like the same I do with the truck right and then when the Jeep psh, the air went out I started the the um, so the Honda was there right so I the guys showed me how to operate this trailer you know like I never had this kind of it's total different trailer from mine you know I managed to put it down uh, unhook the gooseneck disconnect the uh, the lines and drag the Jeep from under it and then once the Jeep was uh, just in the clear I, I went back and uh, raise the suspension so that the tires don't rub the defenders and then one day I left the engine running because I was afraid it wouldn't start again so on the gooseneck and then I know it's the same engine that operates the um, the flip box and we struggled a bit the other guy was helping me like one pin on the driver's side went out easy at the bottom but the other one on the right was stuck and I asked this guy I said can you just you know I'll play with the uh, control like up down up down and you try to pull it out and it was stuck you know and then basically I had to climb inside and there was a hammer in there and I started hammering on the on the pin from inside and eventually it came out and I was just lift one lever and the flip box went down and then I disconnected the uh, hoses uh, the hoses from the they, because the hoses were in the flip box I think that you have to disconnect them over there to the main trailer and then you have to install the kingpin like the the real kingpin not the one from the on the flip box it's like solid right and that's it and then I just uh, backed all the way somewhere here where the cranes were and I dropped the Jeep again and folded all my lines it's like a lot of work you know folded all my lines went back to the trailer hooked to the trailer and the trailer is on the ground right so I had to drop my suspension and then that engine was still running I uh, I was you know jumping out a couple of times to make sure that the gooseneck the kingpin would not hit my frame behind the behind the truck and it was like real easy I backed under hooked up all the lines raised the trailer then went inside the truck Put the air in my suspension and right away I saw like how heavy this thing is especially the trailer is very heavy like if my trailer empty is um, like I'm 53,000 pounds and 27 is the truck so 20, my trailer is 26 so I'm pretty sure this trail is like minimum 30 because of the gooseneck and the flip box you know because I saw right away my uh, suspension load over here suspension load went over 100 you know because I was backing I could not use the pusher that's the pressure for the pusher right but basically that's uh, then I uh, I backed enough to go with this uh, that alley that goes to the exit and so I backed this way then I went into the alley and then back the opposite way and then finally I was able to put my pusher down and I drove in here like near the rail rail line railroad line and I raised my push and I backed and now there's uh, two cranes one oh and then I, I dropped the suspension on the truck and I started the Honda and I dropped the trailer on the ground like without disconnecting the gooseneck I just dropped it you know for stability um, so the front is on the ground the gooseneck is connected and uh, I uh, Again, I now they showed me where the switch is for the air like on this trailer like on mine I don't know I have it right but on here it's everything is inside fenders on this uh, schnitzel Schechtel what's the, I forgot the name Schiltima <laughs> there's a little switch like old style switch inside the fender there's like a little hole where those uh, bolsters are uh, between axles and the guy showed me like you see, and that's the thing, like, I don't know, cool or not cool thing about this job as a trucker is that you gotta be a good learner, you know? Like, you have to learn sometimes really fast on the job, so they show you once, and that's it, right? When, when the guys were... It takes forever. Well, they're still not hooked up, you know? Like, two guys, they're still setting up their stuff. And so, yeah, so they showed me, you know, 
well the controls were how to disconnect the pins where the kingpin goes and so you know I have to deal with like really vital for safety operations like I had to remember to remove the kingpin from the front uh, to flip the box insert the the real kingpin right fold all the lines connect all the lines you know um, but I'm so happy that the Jeep is gone you know like after this experience I don't know it's just too complicated you know I don't think this stuff pays enough you know like where you need a Jeep it's so much better when you have like my axle you know is always there push a button the axle goes down i don't have to drop trailers 20 times i don't have to disconnect the airlines between the pusher and the truck right it's so much easier you know like i'd be running on eight axles uh and maybe i'll add a stinger you know later on like a spreader but We'll see, right? By the way, this trailer, the fourth axle, it has uh, uh, shims in there, so it does not go up. Like for for that axle to go up, uh, like I have no clue. They didn't tell they didn't tell me how to do that, and I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna run it with all four axles on on the ground, yeah. on the trail. I'm talking about the trailer. Like if this was my trailer, right? I would just either flip that axle or or leave um, leave uh, erase the axle three like on my trail I can have four axles down and I can like the flip down I can raise my axle three you know which is sometimes very handy and I'm not too long like I'm 80 feet with the flip down and now when I have this oh and the, I'm, I'm so happy you know I cannot wait to go back to my trailer and hook up to that flip box i love that flip box it added so much flexibility it's like the best you know bang for the money like i still remember how it uh, uh, took five thousand pounds from my drives and when i moved the when i dropped that flip box and i moved the fifth wheel and i i lost five thousand pounds and two thousand went on the front no three thousand went on the steer two thousand went back on the trailer you know it's like sometimes it can be so helpful you know because imagine you come to um, inspection station and the guy says oh you're 1000 pounds over on your drive you know and you try to move your fifth wheel but there's only so far you can go before you hit the trailer right uh, or like forward well in theory i can go is i have 72 inch slider which of course i don't need i was asking the guy I said give me a 60. no well let's do 70. 72 okay so i have like 10 meter slider so i can go forward till i hit the sleeper you know but then you hit the trailer in the back right and that's why you need that flip box very cool so i'm so happy about that and thanks again to kenworth and pecar for allowing me to put that on the contract with the truck and so yeah so after this if they manage to finally take this off and I'm telling you like just like I always say if you have one load for a long time then after like one week or two weeks you cannot wait to get that load off you know it's just it's getting on your nerves you know because it's so heavy you know like my mileage was like freaking 60 liters per hundred kilometers I don't know three miles a gallon when it's windy when it's windy and uh, hilly and so um, the plan now is I have to hide my chains I just put them on the trailer away from these guys so that they're not in the way but I don't want to mix them up because there's chains um, you know this trailer has its own chains right and I don't want to mix up their binders and uh, my binders and they change my chain so I have to find once they lift this machine I have to find one dedicated pocket where I can put my cheek because they look very similar you know like the same size and so that's one thing I gotta do and then I still have to raise like once they take this off I cannot just drive away I have to raise the trailer because the trailer is now on the ground I have to start the Honda um, put the air in the suspension otherwise that kingpin will not lock in there for the right height control and then run back and uh, push the button in the suspension because now there's there won't be any air in the suspension and then 
we're going around the corner where I parked the Jeep and they have to load the Jeep on the trailer and I have to secure the Jeep but you know and that's just I don't know they said the seven seventy five hundred uh, kilos what is it like twelve thousand pounds so two big chains is more than enough so they're gonna load it right on the deck and then I'm driving back straight back there's no loads out of here for me because I already booked a load uh, Friday I gotta be in uh, Maryland so tomorrow Thursday early morning I'm going to the crane company I'm dropping I'm giving them this trailer I'm paying the rental I'm picking up my trailer if nobody stole it yet and right away I start I need to do 500 miles before Friday morning and Friday morning I load in uh, in Maryland and that would be an awesome uh, crane load one of those all-terrain cranes very cool uh, 88,000 pounds and I'll be going back to Canada so I'm so gonna be busy over, over the next couple of days and of course uh, they told me that the permits can take a while so it's best to order the permits uh, so that's one thing I do when I'll shut down somewhere I don't think I'll make it all the way to uh, to uh, Cambridge today but I'll shut down somewhere over there and I'll have to do the permit form like the request for the permit form and send it to the because I already know you know it's a crane right they shipped it before the same model they know the exact dimensions the weight they're gonna take the counterweights off but it's still gonna be 88,000 88 I'm guessing I'm gonna put 90,000 pounds on it and hopefully by the time I, I'm there to load the my permit at least one permit will be issued and uh, because I can drive uh, in US like Saturday I can drive till noon in New York you know so pretty cool uh, so sorry I cannot tell you I cannot show you again how they lift it because I don't want them screaming at me you know but uh, it was one interesting load it's yeah yeah it's too long too long didn't pay enough but you know that's fine like right now I'm just I just need to uh, get up my cash flow you know kind of like up and running uh, get up my cash flow up to speed and so the money starts coming in everything is good and all I gotta do is just, you know, don't screw up and keep working. So that's the plan. Thanks for watching. Captain Sergey out. We'll catch you on the next one.